Hello everyone and welcome back to Network 27. I'm Alderman Walter Burnett, Alderman of the 27 Ward. I'd like to thank everyone for viewing. I'd like to thank everyone who helped us to put this show together. Uh, we have a couple of things going on. Uh, you all know we've been having our annual step and set, uh, monthly step and set that goes on every month, a clean and sober step and set. It's getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Guys, come get your jam on. Uh, it's at the Salvation Army over on Christiana and Chicago Avenue. Is every third Friday of the month, the 16th of March. <laughs> uh, so please come on out and have a good time. Come step with your alderman. Show me your moves and I'll show you mine. It's okay. Uh, also, myself and uh, Secretary of State Jesse White are doing a job fair uh, together uh, for the first time. And it's going to be at the Jesse White Center at 412 West Chicago Avenue, March 29th. Um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This job fair is going to be a citywide job fair. Uh, and there's going to be several vendors there. There's going to be some job opportunities. Uh, we're trying to have some, if folks need uh, outfits like ties and suits and what have you, uh, and maybe some prep programs there. So please come out and get a job. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I have a special guest. He's a county commissioner in, in, in our area. Um, in the second district? Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us uh, Cook County Commissioner Dennis Deere. Yes. How you doing, Thanks Commissioner? For, I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me today. Th thank you for being here. So some of you all may, may or may not know, uh, unfortunately, we lost one of our great commissioners, Commissioner Robert Steele. Uh, he's a great man. He's the son of former commissioner and former president. Uh, Bobby Steele. Uh, some of you all may or may not know my wife actually used to work for Bobby Steele. She was her administrative assistant. So we were real close to the family. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Robert passed away. Dennis Deere uh, is one of his right hand men, uh, was one of his right hand men, and, uh, and he's been chosen to get appointed for the seat. So myself and several other elected officials in the area have chosen Dennis to take the seat. So we're happy to have him as a county commissioner. And, and, and Dennis, uh, because some of these folks may be meeting you for the first time, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, Alderman, thanks for all that you do. Um, it's, it's individuals like you whose shoulders I stand on in order to do what I do. Um, again, my name is Dennis Deere, as the Alderman has already indicated, Cook County Commissioner of the second district. Uh, born and raised right in North Lawndale on the west side of Chicago. Um, I was appointed July the 13th, uh, which is actually seven months and about 10 days ago. Um, and yes, I am counting. Um, and uh, born and raised North Lawndale, um, born uh, very, very poor in Lawndale, uh, but had parents that were civically engaged, um, always trying to do the right thing. So I come from very good roots. Um, left North Lawndale uh, when I came of age, went away to college, uh, earned my uh, bachelor's, master, and, and PhD degrees um, in psychology, um, and then came right back to my community um, to do work. Um, I started um, an organization, a community mental health center and substance abuse treatment facility, and um, I actually, Alderman, had a defining moment when I was 10 years old. Um, I saw my first murder from my back porch. Um, and that, you know, caused what I would call clinically PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, it was a defining moment because at that point I said to myself, um, I have to do something that, to help my community out. And I believe it was then that I decided that I wanted to function as a psychologist. So I ended up doing that through God's grace and was able to come back to my community and help individuals in our community. I, I grew up in an area called, called North Lawndale was 70 percent of the males 18 to 45 are ex-incarcerated. Um, the other side of my district mirrors that in Inglewood. Um, there's a similar statistic there. And so I have spent the majority of my life helping individuals as they come out. I'm actually down in the congressional records as one of the architects of the Second Chance Act that was passed back in 2008. And so we continue to, to move forth in initiatives like that in order to help individuals take themselves to the next level. That's great. So. So, I had the uh, opportunity of meeting your lovely wife. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you all been with each other for a long time. Very long. Why don't you tell us about that? So, thank you so much, Alderman. Uh, my wife, whom I met in high school, actually, 
We've been together since high school. Um, we went to college together. She's a speech language pathologist. Um, uh, my backbone, we have three lovely children, uh, twin sons who are 15 years old, and um, a little daughter that's 12. In fact, it's interesting that you mentioned that she just celebrated a birthday on yesterday. Um, and because I did a public forum yesterday, I got to take her out to dinner today. And so um, she's just fantastic, has been an anchor for me, and, and is right there on the battlefield with me. Fantastic. So you still live in the community? I do. So you live in the same community you that you grew up in? I did. In fact, I live just around the corner from where I grew up at. Is that right? Yes. I grew up right there at Grinshaw and Holman, and I live right around the corner in Holman Square. So tell us, what's your relationship with the Stills? So, um, great question. I actually went to Mount Hebron Church with the Steels and had known President Steels since I was probably eight years old. And in fact, um, I, I really got to know Bobby her. Bobby Steele. Bobby Steele, yes. Uh, and I really got to know her because um, she would, was chairing the Black History Program at our church. And she challenged me at eight years old to learn the Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech. Um, and I said I couldn't do it. So I should test you right now. You probably should. I, still, <laughs> I actually still know it. Okay, uh, go I, ahead. I, 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 go I actually ahead. said it at Stone Temple Church where Dr. King had came, come to speak just for their black history program um, a couple weeks ago. And so she, she, she gave me that speech. She challenged me. I ended up learning that speech. I said it for her black history program. She gave me three weeks to learn it. I said it so well that she took me all around Chicago saying the, the I have a dream speech. And then after that, you know, I continued. She became like a mother figure to me. You know what that remind me of? What's that? That remind me when James Brown was out. All the kids used to do the James <laughs> Brown. My dad used to take me everywhere and make me right, right. Do, do, do the James, James Brown. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely correct. So, so she she did that, and we continued our relationship. She became a, a mother figure to me, and her kids became brother figures to me, um, and that's how I met uh, Robert and Byron and and the sisters. And to this day, um, they've been great. And as you know, I was chair of, of Robert's organization and in his mother's organization, always working in the background. In, in addition to my, 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 my psychology stuff, I've always been a community activist mm -hmm. because I believe that if we don't help our community out, who else will? We, we can't wait on Superman. He's not coming to save us. I think he's in Lake Michigan with kryptonite around his neck. So we have to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and we have to be the change that we want to see. So you and Robert have another connection, uh, one that I'm not trying to promote. You should promote no, it. No, no. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you should promote that. <laughs> but you all have another uh, connection. You know, my, my connection is blue I and white. I saw that when I'm I walked white. in. See, I all saw my that. stuff is blue and white. You I see, see, I have on blue I see, and white. I see, I see. <laughs> but you all are what? Purple and Purple and gold. Purple and gold. Purple so and purple gold. And gold. So you all are? Uh, members of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. OK, so the, uh, AKA, they call you all the Q's. Uh, Q dogs. The Q's. That's Q right. Dogs, right. That's so, right. So I know Robert was uh, very involved with that. I guess he shared that relationship with Jesse Jackson. He does. Jesse Jackson does. and several other and many other notable men, notable yes. people uh, here in the city of Chicago. That's right. And and I also noticed you you had a fantastic senior citizen uh, event. Uh, which was very nice, and that's something that's near and dear to my heart because I, I do that a lot. So I, so I commend you for doing that. I Absolutely. guess Robert used to do that, and used he to do it, it with Robert yep. and uh, several singers there. But one of the six hundred six hundred singers. One of the things that I noticed uh, at that event was that it was all purple and gold. That's right. It was like a whole bunch of uh, Q-Dogs was helping you with that. Oh, absolutely. It was purple and gold everywhere. In fact, if you've seen the Black Panther, did you see the movie yet? Oh, man. Well, when they drink that <laughs> stuff, they, they all turn purple when they drink it. <laughs> so, you know, it's something to be said about that. But, but you're right. Omega Sci-Fi believes in giving back to the community through service projects like that. 
um, helping out our senior citizens, mentoring our youth, our youth in the community. We do that all across the city and actually all across the country. I'm actually involved in our international board even uh, for violence prevention. So we're doing violence prevention initiatives not only here in Chicago, but internationally across the country as well as internationally. So it's all about service and giving back. Unlike some other fraternities and, and sororities, they, they stop after college, but you and I are part of Divine Nine, and we continue to give back to our communities far after we finish college. Fantastic. So one of the unique things about you, and we only have a few minutes left, uh, one of the unique things about you being a county commissioner. Yes. You know, a lot of folks may you know, don't know everything that the county do, but it deals a lot with public safety and yes. public health, uh, with our hospitals and our prison jails and all of those things, and uh, and also the forest preserve. One of the unique things about you is that you had a psychology background. Yes. And you you, you talked about your tra traumatic experience yes. as a child. Uh, and I would venture to say that a, a large percentage of the people that are incarcerated or in jail um, are, are in there because of some traumatic experiences. Absolutely. And uh, so I think it's unique and, and, and very needed to have somebody like you on the board uh, to be able to have that, that psychological perspective well, let me in dealing with these things. Well, let me tell you, I am the only one on the county board right now that has a clinical background, so whenever mental health stuff comes up, everybody looks at me. The only other person that served on the county board that had a clinical background was Congressman Davis. So I had a history, there's only been two of us, I'm actually the second one. Another piece that I put out there is that oftentimes people ask me, well listen, what does a county commissioner do? We have three major focuses, three major roles. We legislate, which means we create ordinances and laws. We appropriate, which means we have to come out with a balanced budget for not only Cook County, but all the separate elected officials. And then we investigate. Whenever somebody actually does a lawsuit against Cook County, we investigate that and make sure taxpayer dollars are actually being spent appropriately. So those are the three main functions that we have as Cook County Commissioners. Fantastic. So, so Dennis, uh, myself and Jesse White, we're supporting you. Thank you so much. Uh, our organization, just like we supported you to be uh, appointed. Yes. And uh, we look forward to you staying on the board. Uh, Absolutely. And we look forward to working with you um, for the future. And I look forward to working with you all as well. You're my divine nine brothers. All right, man. Brother White is a Kappa Alpha oh, Psi. Oh, man. That, well, <laughs> no, people never notice, but the, so all my stuff is always blue and white. That's right. The Jesse White tumblers are red and white. I noticed that. You noticed that? I noticed so they that. suits are red and That's white. Right. The That's mats right. are red and That's white. Right. It's all Kappa stuff. So That's right. It's something in the colors. That's but, right. <laughs> That's right. But yeah. So we, we really appreciate you, man. Uh, do you have anything coming up? In, in, uh, in, 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 in we, we're in March now. We're recording now, but we're in March. Yes. Uh, you have anything coming up after So this? we did. we did a public safety forum last night. The next thing that we have coming up, just like you and Mr. White are doing, we actually have a job fair. We're bridging the gap between the west side and the south side so that none of us are left outside. And so whatever we do south, we do west. Whatever we do west, we do south. We did, a, we did one on the south side back in January, and we had um, 18 employers there. We had people getting hired on the spot. 300 people showed up. We're doing one at Malcolm X on May, uh, March the 15th um, from 9 to 1. That's March the 15th from 9 to 1. Come over to Malcolm X. We're going to have a job fair. We've already got lined up, I believe, 15 employers. Um, they're going to be hiring on the spot. We have people in the healthcare industry, transportation, manufacturing. Come on out to that job fair March the 15th at, um, and that's on a Friday, I believe, at from 9 to 1. Fantastic. So, uh, uh, Commissioner Dennis Deere, yes. we want to thank you very much. You thank jumped you. in this thing and you already running, man. I mean, you already doing the job. Thank you. And as they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Don't fix it. That's Let's right. Keep them Thanks in so office. much, all the men. We bless appreciate you. you. Thank you for coming on. Bless you as well. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Alderman Walter Burnett with some exciting opportunities for you. Uh, myself and Secretary Jesse White are partnering with the Jesse White Foundation on their second citywide job fair. Uh, this job fair, they have a lot of resources at this job fair. There's gonna be a lot of vendors there. There's, some of them may be hiring on the spot. There's a lot of resources for veterans. Uh, there's resources there for people who have made mistakes in their lives to get expungements on their record. 
they also have resources there that's going to be able to help you to be able to dress for success. So they will have suits and ties and clothes and many other things there. So please come out. It's going to be March 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 412 West Chicago Avenue. And please prepare yourself for a job. Um, don't do anything that would make someone not want to hire you. Thank you and God bless. All right, everyone, welcome back. So now we have another gentleman, uh, great gentleman here, who actually is expiring to be like Cook County Commissioner Dennis Deere. We have Mr. Brandon Johnson. How you doing, brother? Very well, Alderman. All right, thank you, thank you for coming out. Of course, man, thanks for uh, having me. Brandon, people may, may know you or may know your voice. You got a radio program on WVON. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. you're a good talker. You talk a lot of stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's what we do on the West Side. I also, we uh, back it up, though. yeah, and I, I know you from uh, being a teacher in Cabrini Green at, at a school I used to go to, which was Jenna's School. Uh, so you know our folks, you know, uh, but but instead of me telling people about you, why don't you tell folks a about you? Sure, and thanks Alderman, thanks for having me on today, and of course the work that you do, and um, appreciate the challenges that you're willing to embrace and take on, and you know, as you said, I've, I've, I started my professional career in Cabrini Green before I was a teacher, I actually uh, ran programs out of the New City YMCA. Um, as a program director, as a camp counselor, as a team camp counselor. Oh, over, in, over in the hood. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, I, I still consider Cabrini Green like my second home and uh, learned so much from, from the community and the families that I served there. But I wanted to do something more. And that's when I decided to go back to school, get my master's degree, became a teacher. Um, the programs that I ran, ran out of the New City YMCA allowed me to work um, at Jenner, Bird, Schiller, you know, all those places uh, in, in Cabrini Green. But like I said, I wanted to do something more, and so I became a teacher. And the first place that I applied was Jenner Academy of the Arts, and um, it was the best job that I've ever had. I taught middle school, social studies and reading, and uh, learned so much from that experience. And uh, the best part about you know teaching, especially middle school, and as you know, um, Alderman, having raised a family, uh, the middle school age is a very uh, a challenging time for, for young people. And it's, um, but, but it's also a time where uh, young people begin to see what's possible. Um, and they, they're still young enough to hold on to their dreams, but they're also starting to focus in on what's possible and just play a part in that. Um, means still today a lot to me. So after uh, working at Jenner, uh, where are you now? What are you doing yeah, now? Yeah, so I, I taught um, for, for several years in the Chicago Public Schools, uh, moved on, taught uh, at Westinghouse on the west side of Chicago. Yeah. Uh, taught high school. So I had the experience of teaching middle school and high school, but a few years ago um, I was asked to consider to take a leave of absence from the classroom uh, to become an organizer with the Chicago Teachers Union. Um, and I did. And it's one of the best uh, decisions I've made uh, in my life. Um, as you know, the public schools um, have been grossly underfunded for forever. And not only have they been underfunded, they've been under-resourced and understaffed. And there's been an attack against public accommodations in general, public schools, uh, public health, public housing, and of course those that do the work. And so I decided to become an organizer with the Chicago Teachers Union and played uh, a leading role um, in pushing forward the, the historic strike of 2012. Um, that pushed back against privatization and the corporatization of our schools and um, the, the loss of black educators, which is dear and important to me. Um, the history of black elected officials in this city um, and in this county um, that came out of the public school system as teachers, as leaders. Um, I thought it was important that um, our generation took on that challenge to make sure that we have a school system that all of our children deserve. So I've been doing that the last few years. So you've been fighting for kids. Yep. Being a teacher, uh, you were before that uh, helping young folks in, in a re recreational scene and being a mentor, because I remember going to the wise, a lot of mentors there. Uh, so you were uh, standing up for them then, and then now you're standing up for teachers. Yeah. So you've been fighting for teachers to get fairness and justice and being able to do what they can do. Uh, now tell us, are you married? Yeah, you know, I am married. Uh, I've, um, in fact, uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I celebrated our first date. We, we, our first date 
was 21 years ago, the day after Valentine's Day. Wow. And uh, we're coming up on our 20th year of marriage. Congratulations. No, I'm excited, man. 20 years. Uh, my wife is an amazing woman. She's still with you. Man, let me tell you. Man, we need uh, to give her a medal, you, man. Listen, you pray know? for her, give her a medal, <laughs> everything. And I think the good thing about being married 20 years, I'm convinced, I know she likes me at least four days out the week. <laughs> and uh, that's up from last year. So, so things are looking better for us. So, but no, 20 years, uh, my wife and I were raising our children in the Austin neighborhood. Um, have a 10, a 5, a 3 year old and um, yeah, she, she is certainly the, the strength of our home, the creativity that she brings forward and of course just the, the trust that she has in me um, as her man. Uh, she made a good decision too though. Fantastic. So did you grow up in Austin? <laughs> so no, I mean uh, my story is a little um, uh, unique, um, you know, like most black families my father was the oldest, came up from Salus, Mississippi. Uh, my grandmother, my father, his siblings, my grandmother's brothers, they ended up on 79th and Ashland on the south side of Chicago. And many of uh, my grandmother's brothers went up to Michigan, Flint, Saginaw, Detroit. My father decided to take us west and took us all the way west to a small town at that time in Elgin. Um, and we you know, went back and forth a little bit. Once I got 18, I you know, settled here um, uh, in, in Chicago and we've been here for the last 20 plus years now. Fantastic. Did you go to school here? Yeah, no. So I actually ended up graduating from high school in Elgin, Elgin High School, which uh, folks may not be familiar. It's the second largest school district in Illinois, only second to Chicago. So many of the same challenges, um, black, brown students, white students, um, working class um, families primarily, but a public school that um, at the time offered many of the dynamics that unfortunately my cousins and other relatives in the city of Chicago didn't have where we had you know art music you had wood shop and uh, auto mechanics those things that allow students to develop in a holistic way and that's one of the reasons why I'm fighting so um, um, hard in Chicago to have the well-rounded curriculum that our students deserve. So you right now are aspiring to be like Dennis Deere um, and and Dennis, Dennis is, is a county commissioner for the second yeah. uh, commissioner's district. Yeah. You're expiring to be a county commissioner in which district? In the first district. So the I'm running district. Uh, for what, Cook What's County. the area of the first district? Yeah, so the first district is a dynamic district. It's a microcosm of Illinois because it's 45% suburbs and it's 55% city. Uh, so we get all of pr primarily Proviso, which is Maywood, Bellwood, Broadview. Forest Park, West, uh, Westchester, North Riverside, I mean just those western suburbs in Oak Park. And then it comes into my part of the district where I live, uh, the 29th Ward, the 37th Ward, which is primarily Austin. Of course, we come into 28th, 27th Ward, West Humboldt, Garfield Park community. We go as far east as uh, western. Um, so it's a dynamic district. Some of the wealthiest families live in this district. And we have families who are uh, living in um, conditions that the, the, the UN have described as uh, third world or developing country conditions where poverty and violence per capita um, is as high as it's been in, in developing nations. So what do you think you can contribute to, uh, to the board? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good question. And, and I'm glad to be in this position to run. You know, there's been a, a, an incredible movement that has propelled uh, many folks like me who've been in the classroom, who've been serving on the front line, to be in a position to run for office. And I'm not, certainly not the first teacher in Chicago to run for public office. As you know, Secretary White, uh, we both taught in Cabrini Green, um, former board president, uh, uh, President Steele, was an educator. Congressman Davis was an educator. Tony Preckwinkle. Tony Preckwinkle was an educator. Most of them were all social studies teachers like myself. Um, but I decided to run because I think you, you re I think I believe we have to have people who are willing to stand up and fight for the revenue, for the services that our people rely on. You know, I, I see the, the my primary responsibility um, as a county commissioner uh, is to generate the revenue so that our health care system is funded. Um, that our public safety component of the county is, is supported. Um, but the health care is an important part for me. Um, serving in, in the public schools, I've seen firsthand when schools are closed, when budgets are cut, when people are laid off, when we lose those services, our people suffer and they hurt. Um, I grew up with asthma, I still deal with it. 
Uh, I used the Fantas Clinic at the county hospital. I relied upon that. I stood in those lines, um, utilizing those services, and they're being cut. We lost over 300 positions just this last budget cycle. So I'm gonna bring a perspective to the county board that speaks to not just folks who have needed those services, but those who actually delivered those services. Um, and those are many of those services, again, whether it's the county um, hospital system, healthcare system, um, Austin is a, a, a real dynamic place where I live, Loretto Hospital, 65% um, of those um, who receive service at Loretto Hospital receive services through Medicaid. Um, I wanna fight to protect that. 40% of those that work at Loretto Hospital live right in the Austin community. And so you understand this is the connection between the services and those that do the work. And, and if we're not committed to generating revenue for our county, um, those services cannot be executed in a way in which people actually require and need. So I'm gonna bring that energy, that fight. Um, you know, Alderman, you, you, know, you know me, we're, we're family now. Um, and you know, we fight. You know, we have our disagreements, and one of the things I think people can count on for me as, as a county commissioner, that I'm prepared and willing to take on the tough issues, especially as it relates to revenue. Um, Illinois is one of the largest economies and the richest country in the world. You know, Cook County government, the 19th largest um, economy. If it, was a, if it were a state, it would be the 19th largest state. Um, the fact that we had black women begging for their jobs on the county floor, um, that's disheartening. We have to do better. And you know, at the same time, you have the richest man in the world that is looking to get a tax break. And so I wanna fight for those services and those who actually do the work. So when you say black women was begging for their jobs on the county floor, what are you referring to? Yeah, so the last county budget, um, it, uh, there were severe cuts, uh, 324 positions, 34, which were nurses, um, public defenders. We have this austerity budget, Alderman, where it's very difficult to actually deliver services that our people rely on. And so public defender's office, they're down, several public defenders. The state's attorney's office um, is down. Um, you know, the, the, the department that investigates the wrongfully convicted or like these brutality cases, um, the backlog um, where uh, Kim Fox is trying her best uh, to bring this to the forefront. I think she's doing a really good job at it. But if we don't have the revenue so that we can actually have those who have the ability to actually investigate, as um, Commissioner Deere mentioned, then you're gonna continue to have this backlog and you're gonna have a loss of service. And someone has to stand up and say out loud that we have to tax the right people and those are your millionaires and billionaires. Yeah, and you know, I. Um we all run into this uh, being in government <clears throat> and, and a lot of times you have to make those hard decisions in order to do what's right and there's always a, a there's always these rubs between what's popular and what's right right and and sometimes folks take what's popular and just don't do anything mm instead of standing up and doing what's right because you know you have to do something, right? And, uh, and, and I agree with you. Uh, you know, those instances where those folks are losing their uh, employment um, affect a lot of people countywide. And, and uh, trying to put that together to make sure those folks are in a good position because those few people affect thousands of other people in our county. No. And so you, you have to choose, and, and, and when you do things that's right, you have to sacrifice sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, because, um, you know, you, you have to do things to, to, in order for things to keep happening. Yeah. You can't just do nothing, and you right. can't just say what makes everybody feel good. Well, yeah, and I think, look, I mean, as an educator, uh, and as someone who's been organizing, um, I've worked on settling contracts. You know, I've, as an organizer with the Chicago Teachers Union, we have to come to agreements all the time. We've been doing that, the history of this union for the last 80 years. And I think that that is something that's necessary. But the question becomes, how much are you asking and demanding from us as working class families, can I be perfectly frank, particularly black working class families, the things that you're demanding from us, I think it's pretty clear. We're willing to contribute as much as we possibly can so that services can be delivered. The question then becomes, what are we asking from everybody else? And the fact that the tax rate right now um, for a millionaire and a billionaire is the same tax rate for someone who works in the cafeteria, that's an unjust structure. The fact that we have large corporations that just got a tax break from Donald Trump, 
they're making so much money that they're buying their own stocks. Um, why aren't we requiring more from these large Fortune 500 corporations that benefit from being in Cook County and, of course, in the city of Chicago? And I'm saying let's demand more from them. Unfortunately, I had to cut you off. We got a few more minutes. Uh, before we get cut off, uh, Tell people when when your show come on. on yeah, WDOA. so so thank you for that. And um, my show is 11 a.m. on Saturdays from uh, 11 a.m. to noon um, every single Saturday on WVON. I'm um, taking a little break, but we'll be back up uh, real soon. But they can check us out. It's called What's Left with Brandon Johnson. And uh, one day I'll be important like you, and they'll put me on TV too. <laughs> <laughs> you on TV now, brother. Right. <laughs> you are. Dreams important. do come true. All right. Well, I wish you luck um, and and. I pray that we'd be sitting here, uh, you know, after the election and talking to you about your new position. Thank you. All Good luck to you. you. All you. right, brother. All right. Take care. Hello, everyone. This is Alderman Walter Burnett with some exciting opportunities for you. Uh, myself and Secretary Jesse White are partnering with the Jesse White Foundation on their second citywide job fair. Uh, this job fair, they have a lot of resources at this job fair. There's going to be a lot of vendors there. There's, some of them may be hiring on the spot. There's a lot of resources for veterans. Uh, there's resources there for people who have made mistakes in their lives to get expungements on their record. They also have resources there that's going to be able to help you to be able to dress for success. So they will have suits and ties and clothes and many other things there. So please come out. It's going to be March 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 412 West Chicago Avenue. And please, prepare yourself for a job. Um, don't do anything that would make someone not want to hire you. Thank you and God bless. All right, so we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have another expiring uh, county commissioner. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Bill Lowry. How you doing, man? Alderman, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Oh, man, glad to have you. You know, one of the things about you, uh, Bill, is you always a shot, man. <laughs> well, look who's uh, man, talking. Man, man, I want some of your old suits, well, dude, man. Look who's talking. You, Coming yeah. from you, that's a compliment. That's a compliment. <laughs> you always shot. Absolutely. Hey, so, uh, Bill, I know, uh, you know, just like uh, Dennis Deere before you, uh, Dennis is filling the seat of someone who have uh, passed away. You're filling the seat of someone who decided not to right. not to run again. That's right. Uh, a great man. He's actually one of my homeboys. A lot of folks, I don't know if they know, Jerry Butler started singing on the corners in Cabrini Green, uh -huh. man. Yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the Ice Man, and um, uh, he decided to um, to give it up this time, and, and now he left for vacancy and you're looking to fill that vacancy. That's right. So why don't you tell the audience about um, about Bill Lowry, and then, then let's tell them wh wh where that vacancy is, what, okay. what's the area, okay. what's, that, what's that district? Well, let me start off by saying um, these are huge shoes to try to fill. Oh, without a doubt. And, you know, as I've, as I've gone around. Can you sing? You can't sing. I can't sing, and I've been straight. <laughs> That's the first thing I've said to everyone that I've talked to since I started this campaign. I can't sing, but I promise I will work hard. Uh, the district is huge. It's the third district, and it's a backwards L. And it goes north to Eugenie. It goes south to 87th Street. It goes, it hugs Michigan Avenue and, and really the lake. And depending on how far south is how far west you go. So 87th actually goes all the way to Pulaski. Wow. There are other strips of the district where you only go to Cottage Grove. Uh, but there are 14 wards in the district, and I've spent uh, a lot of wonderful time uh, in each ward, and I have loved the time I've been in 27. But I'll tell you this, as I go to different wards, uh, there's a very different narrative that I hear. And there's no question in my mind, this is still the tale of two cities. Uh, and I've seen that. Uh, now, now, I also have to thank you for, for having me here, uh, because I am born and raised, for 55 years, I've lived on the south side. Okay. So thank you for letting me come to, to the other good side. Um, I've lived my whole life between 26th Street and 85th Street. Um, I grew up in Marynook, and my father's also Bill Lowry, and he had a local uh, television show for about 20 years called Opportunity Line. So it's like this show, he taped the show. And then on Saturdays, we'd make our runs together. Alderman, every Saturday, I'd see someone come up and thank him because that show had gotten him a job. And I remember not only seeing the adults who said that to him, but other kids my age, they were proud of their parents. And I saw very early what a job can mean, uh, not only to a person, but a community. And my mother was a teacher for 40 years. 
Uh, so I was just very blessed to come up in a house where my parents uh, not only gave back, but they taught us to try to, to try to give back. I've been married 27 years to wow. Dr. Cheryl Watson Lowry. She's a dentist on, and has her office on Stony Island. I learned very early, happy wife, happy life. Hmm. So uh, we've been, we've been uh, together for the 27 years. We have three children. Our oldest is Bill Jr. He's a second year law student at Loyola and he's a Sigma. Okay. I want to let you know that. I want to let you know that. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, my other son is a senior at DePaul. And then my daughter, who is the one I like, she's a sophomore at USC. <laughs> so she's in. She's the in. The one you like. That's the one I like. I, I always kid him and say, I like, I like the girl. Uh, so she's at USC. Um, I've practiced law for over 30 years. And I love the practice of law. But I knew early I had to do more than just practice law. And I've just tried to serve in different ways. I sit on 14 boards. I'm just going to mention two I'm very proud of. I sit as president um, of the Loyola Law School Board, secretary of the Lake Forest College Board. And I'm proud of that service, not because I went to both schools, which I did, but because at each school I helped us to start a scholarship for African-American students. Uh, there's nothing unique about me. I was blessed to have education. And I think it's important uh, that I try to help other um, young um, uh, African-Americans have that same opportunity. So I think that's very important. But I'm here now in this space uh, because on January 29, 2013, Hydea Pendleton was shot and killed 10 feet from my yard, backyard. And my middle son, Evan, came to me and said, what are you going to do? I said, what am I going to do? He said, what are you going to do? He says, this is on our doorstep. I said, well, and I was honest with him, like I'm always going to be with anyone. I said, I'm going to pray on it and I'm going to talk to your mother. So I did both and then it was just put on us to just invite our friends over um, that next Saturday for breakfast. And we had about 50 people there. And, Aldermen, all walks of life were represented. Um, electeds were there, clergy, business folks. One of my close friends who was a former gangbanger, we had, we had voice for everything in that room. And at the end of it, I said, it's time for us to stop uh, not being seen in our community. It's time for us to open up these doors and try to make a difference. Even if it's small, try to do something. And that led to the creation of our nonviolence organization, the It's Time organization, or Tito. And what we did through Tito, with the help of others, we provided after school programming uh, for high school students in the third, fourth, and fifth wards where most of us live. And really we focused on uh, Wendell Phillips Career Academy. And in addition to the after school programming, uh, we had summer internships for the high school students uh, at different businesses represented by the Tito uh, members. And it was really during that time that I really started to realize that I had to do more. I had to try to serve in a more impactful way. And I've come to believe effective leadership is communication, which is listening as much as talking. Collaboration, which I don't think we see sometimes in, in government the way we should. And then action. And it's really, those are the reasons why I'm now a, a candidate for Cook County Commissioner of the 3rd District. Fantastic, fantastic. So you've been married 27, 27 years. 27 years. I'll be 27 years this year. That's, oh, but that's a yeah, blessing, that's so, a blessing. So good for you. And, and your wife, you and your wife met? We, you know, Chicago is a small, big city. And we met when we were both in high school, mm -hmm. and uh, she was at uh, Whitney Young at the time. Uh, I started at St. Francis de Sales. I was leaving basketball practice one day, car went by, and they shouted out the N-word and shot at us. That Monday, I was at Francis Parker across from Lincoln Park Zoo. So I, I got to know Cheryl socially um, because, you know, it's a small city. And I just started trying to date her then, and she didn't really think much about me. Mm -hmm. And then finally, after she got out of dental school, I was out of law school, we bumped into each other. And she made the mistake of saying yes to dinner, and I haven't let her get away since. I heard that. That's what happened. So, Bill, I know also you've um, you supported so many people for elected office. Uh, you've always been on the in the background, right, right, of helping with policy and helping folks to um, African American elected officials to become elected right. and supporting them to be able to stay there. Why don't you talk a little bit about that and and and, and no one has ever thought that you would run. <laughs> you right. know, they right. always looked at you as the backup man. That's right. That's right. right. And one reason why um, I have been so committed to serving in that way up until now is because I believe that so much good can come from uh, public service uh, when it's done by the right people. I mean, uh, Alderman, you have passion for the 27th. Thank you. And yeah. anyone who knows you, they know that, and it's real. Uh, so I have friends that I have um, tried to assist because they have that same passion. But at some point, you have to realize maybe it's time for you to stop whispering in other people's ears and try to help them on the other side of it. 
So that's why I'm stepping on the other side so I can collaborate uh, with you and with others who are, uh, I think, serving the way that I would hope to. Uh, because I look around these 14 wards, I look around this district, we do need jobs and economic development, but not just that. We need job skills training and we need job placement. But the other thing we need to do is make sure we're leaning on our financial institutions. You know, I think it's important that support is given to business on Michigan Avenue, but I want support to be given to businesses on Western and on Madison and on Cottage Grove and on Stony Island. That's what we need. I want to make sure that uh, minority, female, and veteran business enterprises are being supported. We have 110,000 small African-American businesses in Cook County, and most folks don't know it. That's because most of the businesses are not given the support to grow and to really be all they can be. I have a problem with that. I look at mental health care. Uh, we need mental health care in our communities. You know, before I was a candidate, uh, I joined a Bright Star Community Outreaches Board, and I'm partnering with Pastor Chris Harris and others uh, to bring the Turn Center to Bronzeville, where faith leaders are being trained so they can provide psychological counseling uh, to our teens and to our families because we've got post-traumatic stress going all through our neighborhoods. That's important to me. So affordable health care for our children and our seniors and our veterans and our Medicaid recipients, we have to make sure that we're doing that we're supporting that and we're making that available. And then I look at the criminal justice system and I love the fact that we are starting to see a reform, right? Um, I, I support bail reform, I support electronic monitoring, uh, but one of the things that I'll do, and, I, and I'm mindful that um, Commissioner Deere said one of the functions of the board, it's ordinances, it's legislation. I will absolutely draft le legislation to create a fast track litigation process for those who are incarcerated for nonviolent offenses. Let's get those cases heard. And if you're innocent, you need to get out of that system, back to the community, back to your family, and back to your job. That also will lower the caseload that the state's attorney and the public defenders are trying to juggle so that they can give really the attention that we the people deserve in some of those serious cases. And then the other piece that I've, I've lived this, uh, there was a Saturday where I was walking and we were still trying to get petitions signed. And I asked this young man, he was about my age, I said, are you a registered voter, can you sign my petition? He said, I can't, and I told him my name. And uh, as I walked away, he said, uh, Mr. Larry, can you come here? People I was with, they went on down to the next place. And I said, yes. He said, uh, I just got out of jail for selling drugs. I got three daughters behind my door here. I need a job. So I went in my pocket, I gave him my card, and it just so happened a $20 bill started to come out. I said, may I gift your daughters with a meal? And he took that, and that grown man started crying. He said, thank you, Mr. Larry, I need a job. So our returning citizens, they need to have a job, they need to have shelter, and they need to have transportation. Otherwise, how, I, I can't, how can we give them a new start without giving them those basic opportunities? So these are all reasons why it's time for me to, to be on the front of these issues, working with uh, people like yourself to really try to make a difference. It's time. So Bill, um, and you may not know I know this, but I know that you used to be on, you were appointed to a board with the state. Yeah, I, um, I was appointed by Governor Quinn to Capital Development, Illinois Capital Development Board. And I'm presently uh, vice chair of, of that board. And I'm proud of that service too, but not because of what I've been able to do, but instead because what I've been able to shine a light on. I think a lot of times when people are on boards, they, are, they don't really peel the onion to know how the actual agency works. So I made it my business to try to find out, try to meet with different, different people that work for capital development. How does it really work? How are decisions really made uh, when you talk about engagement with um, minority, female, and veteran business enterprises. And I feel if I don't peel the onion and ask those questions, who will? So I've had some frustration. I'm going to be frank with you. I, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable when people talk about engagement, but I don't actually see it. But my role there is to keep asking those questions and keep pushing for real inclusion, and I will do that as long as I'm serving on that board. So on that board, they, they deal with a lot of the state infrastructure? W what it is is Capital Development Board, it's a, it's a board of seven, uh, we are asked to approve every state construction project. And as you can imagine, um, that's, a, that's a lot of potential um, support uh, for our community. But we have to make sure that uh, our uh, African American contractors, uh, our architects and our engineers are really allowed to be a part of that process. And that's what I push for. So when Quinn was in, you all were doing a lot more. We were, and then, and then what happened, just quite honestly, with the budget uh, issue for two and a half years, a lot of the projects stalled. 
and then certain ones because of um, what percentage of completion had been reached there were certain allocations so they could they could finish but that was a huge impediment so you already have experience in government well, I do right I, I have a lot of experience not only you know relative to this piece uh, but I've also drafted and read a lot of legislation just relative to my law practice over 30 years I also have run a small business and when you smaller when you run a small business you have to do strategic planning you have to do policy making you have to have hiring decisions fun all types of planning which I think will um, really um, it's allowed me to get a skill set that I now think uh, will allow me to serve in this capacity in an effective way yeah and I'm sure being on that board being on that board now and being on that board then uh, you have to work with a lot of different people you do from a lot of different backgrounds yes and who have a lot of different interests and this is why alderman I, I said to me effective leadership is communication collaboration and action that's right that's how you get something that's done. right that's right that's how you get it done yeah you can't just holler and scream and things happen you have to work with folks that's right and sometimes you have to compromise and in, in, in order to help for the better good that's it and with you I'm gonna be able to get a whole lot more done than me just trying to do it. Right. And that's that's what we're gonna do. Whether if you all if you all think differently or feel differently, you can always make a middle ground come about. That's it. And that's reality. That's human nature. If everyone thought the same and was exactly the same, uh, we'd all be bored. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, hey man, Bill Lowry. Thank you. Bill Thank you Lowry, so much. Uh, you're aspiring to be the new Jerry Butler. I can't sing. <laughs> I can't sing. And that's the first. This is the third. The third. Third district. The third district. Covers an eye ward, it covers the Cabrini Green area. Yes, sir. Where Jerry Butler grew up. That's at, right. Right. That's and, right. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you back here. So you'll see me. After the election. You will brother. see me. All right. I promise that. Thank All you. Right. God bless you. All right. You. God bless you too. All right. God Take bless care. you too. Okay. Thank you everyone for watching Network 27. Uh, don't miss the stepping set. I hope that everyone got the calendars in the mail. As far as uh, these folks that I just had on the show, you all should be receiving uh, an official uh, piece of literature from myself and Jesse White talking about some of these people. Appreciate your support. Thank you, God bless you, and see you next month.